Okay, good afternoon, everyone. Yeah, it's good to be here. We're excited about uh, this training, and uh, I'm particularly excited about teaching nutrition. It's one of the things that I do in Kenya. And uh, I always say to the men and women there, you have to, as Dale said earlier, you have to love me after I teach you this because you're probably not going to be very happy about what I have to tell you. And one of the things that was interesting, when we went to Kenya, Dale was saying that the people there absolutely love to eat a cornmeal called ugali, and they also love to eat white rice. And if they could eat anything else, you could offer them all kinds of other options, they would always eat ugali or white rice. And one of the things that I found really interesting is that none of the people that I met had actually eaten a raw green leaf or a salad, and very few would even have vegetables. So one of the things that we felt was really important to teach at our, our training center was the importance of nutrition and eating healthy food. And we also wanted to identify for them the things that were unhealthy because they like things like sugar tea and Coca-Cola and things that are very, very unhealthy for them. And one of the most important things about Organics for Orphans, and I really want to stress this, is that we teach sustainability. If you go into the world and you look at what a lot of other nonprofits are doing, a lot of, of nonprofits are giving them handouts. And our organization is very different because we're teaching them to help themselves not only grow healthy food, but also how to use the indigenous plants that grow in Africa to keep themselves healthy. So let's look at foods that. Okay, let's look at foods that promote disease. Is this working? Yeah. Okay, you probably know that there are 70 trillion cells in the human body, and that cells are important for life, so we have to feed them. You've probably heard the saying, we are what we eat. So unless we eat healthy food, our cells are not gonna be healthy, they're not gonna multiply in a healthy way, and it's very important that, that you learn that. So this is an interesting slide. <clears throat> There's been a lot of changes in the way we eat in North America over the last, um, years, you'll notice that in 1900, people would eat approximately five pounds of sugar a year. In t the year 2000, we're eating 170 pounds of sugar a year. In 1900, they didn't even have soda or soft drink. Now we're, eat we're drinking on an average of 53 gallons a year. In o uh, oils, four pounds a year, 74 pounds a year, cheese, two pounds a year, 30 pounds a year, meat 140 pounds a year 200 pounds not that much for meat but the most important statistic on this chart is homegrown produce in in the year 1900 people would eat 131 pounds of food from their garden and now we're lucky if we eat 11 pounds that's the most significant thing because people no longer grow gardens everybody buys their food from the grocery store and most people like easy processed fast foods so um this is a chart that talks about the difference between brown rice and white rice. And most people from Asian countries and from Africa like white rice. Would you not say that's true? Like I remember we, uh, in Kenya, we will have some of the students over for supper and we always have brown rice and many of them don't even want to taste it. They don't want anything to do with it because they're used to white rice, it tastes better. But brown rice and brown bread, for example, have way more nutrients, as you can see on this chart. <clears throat> so. The difference between, for example, brown bread and white bread is that all of the white things, we always tell the, the Kenyan people to not to trust anything that's white. So here we are teaching them, we're white, we're teaching them, don't trust anything that's white. So white sugar, white flour, white rice, and so it increases blood sugar, increases weight, increases cholesterol, and causes constipation, which is a world, a global health problem. The other thing we talk to them about are trans fats. Trans fats are actually um, very bad for you and they're banned in Canada. <clears throat> so they are, the use of them are banned in Canada. And trans fats is actually linked to many, many different types of diseases. And unhealthy saturated fats are also linked to, to a lot of different types of diseases. So what happens to your body when you eat trans fats? Can anyone tell me what you would normally find trans fats in, like, you know, even, or saturated fats? How about donuts, you know, cookies, pastries, all those things that we all love. So what happens to the body when you eat trans fats? Well, first of all, it affects your, your cholesterol levels. It actually causes, 
the uh, good cholesterol levels to go down and the bad cholesterol levels to go up. It causes um, a hardening and narrowing of the arteries. So it builds up plaque in the walls of the arteries that can lead to hardening and narrowing the arteries and also blood clots. It also increases the uh, chance of type 2 diabetes. And, oh dear. Yeah, see, this is where we were supposed to start, by the way. <laughs> I don't know. I have no idea why we ended up on part two, but anyway. Um, okay, how do I get back to where we were? Maybe I should just use the clicker on the, on the PowerPoint. Okay, so where am I here? Oh, look at all these fun slides you guys get to look at. Okay, so, um, so trans fats are actually, they cause inflammation. And inflammation is actually one of the greatest causes of heart disease. Everyone thinks high cholesterol, um, you know, several different types of things, genetics, etc., causes heart disease. When in fact, inflammation is probably the greatest cause of heart disease, as well as all of these other diseases that you can see on that list. So um, I already talked about type 2. Oh, I'm going back backwards here. Okay, so what are some good fats compared to bad fats? You can look at this list. So good fats are olive oil, coconut oil, avocado, nuts and seeds, and wild-caught seafood. And saturated fats are um, obviously bad for you, trans fats, fats from animal protein, palm, corn, and canola oils. These are all bad oils for you and you should totally Stay away from them. If you're cooking, you should cook with coconut oil because you can use it on very high uh, temperatures and olive oil in your salad dressings. But stay away from all the other fats. So what do healthy fats ha help? And actually, people think if you're eating fats, you're going to get fat, when in fact, you don't get fat because it ke it's very healthy for you. It's healthy for your for brain. It's he healthy for inf reducing inflammation. It raises good cholesterol, lowers bad cholesterol, prevents the buildup of plaque in your arteries. It helps prevent belly fat, prevent inflammation, and promote brain function. So fats are actually good for you. Healthy fats are amazing for you, and they keep you satiated. So having, a, uh, say, an avocado for breakfast is a much better choice than a donut. You know, and how many people like donuts? <laughs> Or, and, or muffins. Everyone thinks, well, muffins are a healthier choice than, than a donut, when in fact there's more fat in a muffin than there is in a donut. Yeah, unhealthy fat, bad fat. So, um, okay, so let's look at foods that promote disease. Sugar, and everyone hates to hear about sugar. But if you, had, if you could eliminate one thing from your diet that is the absolute worst for your health, it would be sugar. Did you know that one teaspoon of sugar shuts your immune system down for four hours? So if you're getting sick or there's somebody around you that's got the cold, the last thing you want to do is, eat, is to drink a soda, which is 11 teaspoons of sugar, or eat a lot of foods high in sugar. So no sugar. Sugar has no nutrients, no protein, no healthy fats, and no enzymes. There's nothing good in sugar. It's basically bad for you. Everybody, you know, everybody still like me? Okay, so how much sugar, how much sugar is hiding in your food? Well, it's in everything. 30%, 33% of, of, of sugar is found in soda. It's hidden in, in ketchup. Fruit juices. Juices are the worst things you can drink. Especially if you want, if you want to lose weight, do not drink juices, sugar juices, even, even um, fruit juices, like juices made from fruit, because you have to put like eight, the juices from eight oranges into one can of, of orange juice when you're far better off to eat one orange, which contains all the fiber and all the nutrients. Very, very high. So you can see by that, there's all kinds of sugar hidden in the foods we eat and we don't even realize it. So what can happen to your body when you eat sugar? Now be prepared, guys, because this is not fun. Okay, so harmful effects of sugar. <clears throat> so 80% of food items in the U.S. grocery stores are spiked with added sugar, and excess sugar contributes to type 2 diabetes. You know that type, that type 2 diabetes can either be prevented or treated simply by diet, simply by cutting back on, on carbohydrates, on raw sugars. It, it's so easily contained. It also increases your risk for disease, especially cancer. It, it does not help, this is kind of funny, but you know, the African guys always laugh at this, that's why I have this picture, because <laughs> they always think it's hilarious. And you know, you've probably heard of the word hidden hunger. 
So in Africa, you don't always see people like all, all starving. Sometimes you, you meet the mamas and they're overweight, but they're overweight because they're eating white rice and cornmeal and they're not eating any vegetables. And so they look like they're healthy weight when in fact they're actually, they're, their cells are starving for nutrition. And sugar suppresses the immune system and it's actually ex more addictive than cocaine. Do you believe that? Yeah. Sugar is more addictive than cocaine. It's true. So uh, excess sugar actually increases your levels for high blood pressure and cholesterol. It is one of the major contributors for fatty liver disease. A lot of people think if they have fatty liver disease, which is a pr prologue to liver cancer, that is caused by excess alcohol, when in fact, one of the greater causes is excess sugar. And it also contributes to ADHD, depression, anxiety, all of the mental health issues. Like it is just really, really bad for you. Um, okay, D tooth decay, that's a lovely picture, isn't it? <laughs> and migraines or headaches. And I have, I have found over the years that one of the things that will trigger a headache for me is sugar. So that's one of the things I stay away from now is I don't eat, I try not to eat raw sugar or cookie or whatever, as, as tempting as it is, because I don't enjoy getting a, a migraine or a headache. So it also feeds cancer. So if you've, you've see, you remember seeing the Pac-Man guys that would gobble up things on the old video games years ago? Well, that's what cancer cells are like. Cancer cells feed on sugar. And what's one of the first things a naturopathic doctor will do if a person has cancer and they go, to go to a naturopathic doctor for treatment or whatever, the first thing they'll say is stop all sugar, including fruit, because it, it just multiplies the cancer cells and the tumor. So what are some of the side effects of soda? Well, not only does soda contain 11 teaspoons of sugar, but it's totally filled with carcinogens. And it's not just Coca-Cola. It's any kind of soda that contains a lot of these ingredients. So phosphoric acid is terrible for weakening your bones. All of these foods make you acidic. You've probably heard of the pH of your blood. And in order for a person to be healthy, your pH needs to be slightly alkaline. And all of these types of foods, sugar, processed foods, meat and dairy, all make you acidic. So soda is one of the worst things, and it is, contains high levels of fructose corn syrup, which is basically sugar that increases your glucose levels dramatically. Food dyes, formaldehyde, which is a high carcinogen. So guys, if any of you eat, um, sh drink sodas, you need to stop. Like any form of pop, any form of soda. If you want to be healthy, you need to stop. I don't know how else to put it. I haven't had a soda in, I would say, probably 35 years. And, I'm, and I don't miss it. I used to drink Coca-Cola as a girl. Okay, this is the other foods that prevent disease. Now we're going to part one. We did part two first, so now we're going to part one. And you are probably aware of this, of this scripture. Our bodies are a temple of the Holy Spirit. And if we don't take care of our bodies, who is going to? Like I truly believe so strongly. We are responsible before God for taking care of our bodies. He's given us one body, one temple, and if we don't take care of our body, we're responsible. Everyone goes, well, I'm, I'm not feeling well. I, they're, you're, they're smoking away, and they're coughing, and they're complaining that, that God's not helping them because they're not feeling well, and they can't breathe. But, you know, why wouldn't we just say, hey, maybe we need to stop smoking because it's not helping our breathing. You know, people I beg God to, to heal them, but they're not willing to give up their trans fats and their sugar, right? So we have to be responsible before God to look after ourselves. Um, so what is a nutritarian? Nu a nutritarian focuses on the number of nutrients per calorie that you, that you put into your body. So if you're a person that is eating a lot of processed foods, a lot of sugar, a lot of um, you know, unhealthy foods, your cells are still going to be hungry. So you might eat a lot of food, but your body doesn't feel uh, satiated or full because you're eating the wrong type of food. You need to feed your cells foods that are full of vitamins, minerals, and phytonutrients. So a, a nutritarian looks at the number of uh, nutrients per calorie, and this is what we teach in Africa. This, uh, the nutritarian was developed by Dr. Joel Furman, and I took his course, which is a six-month course. A nutritarian basically is a way of eating which bases food choices on maximizing the number of micronutrients per calorie. So everything you put into your mouth, you have to think, is this going to feed my cells? Is this healthy? 
is this piece of kale going to give me over 10,000 micronutrients that are going to build my immune system and help me? Or is this donut going to make me gain weight and put trans fats on my, you know, on my, or my increased cholesterol levels and what have you? You always have to think, is this going to help, help me? And doesn't that food look amazing? There's so many wonderful nutrients in these types of foods. So this is Dr. Joel Furman's nutrient density scores, and this is what we use to teach the people in Africa. So you can see white rice has 11 nutrient density points per calorie, and kale has 1,000 nutrient dense per calorie. So which do you think is a better choice if you're wanting to feed your cells, if you're wanting to become healthy? And you can look at that chart, and what we try to do is encourage people to get as much of their food on the, in the green section and then some in the other two sections because you need calories as well as, um, chem as phytonutrients. So we believe, and Dale and I believe that the salad should be the main meal. So we would have a big salad every night for supper. Oftentimes we'll have a salad for lunch. We sometimes have a salad as a smoothie in the morning. So we will we have a Vitamix, we'll put green leaves and fruit into the Vitamix and we will have a, a salad even for breakfast. And then at night we might have a grain like a brown rice or a quinoa or a sweet potato and then um, and lots of veggies, sauteed veggies or whatever. So getting as many veggies into your body is the best choice for you. Dr. Joel Furman is a medical doctor in the United States who has written about 10 books and one of the first books he wrote was called Eat to Live. So you shouldn't live to eat, you should eat to live so that your body's healthy and you grow stronger and healthier as Dale was talking about healthy to 100. And um, he says that 90% of your daily diet should be comprised of um, plant-based foods. And he's written this book called Super Immunity, and he's written two other books called The End of Diabetes and The End of Heart Disease, and it's all based on, on diet. So he has a medical practice in New Jersey in the United States, and he, and he actually treats his patients with food rather than pharmaceutical medication. And he often gets people off, off their medication. So you, you know what macronutrients are, your carbs, your proteins, and your fats. And then we have micronutrients, which are basically nutrients that are found in fruits and vegetables. There are no micronutrients found in animal protein and dairy, just so you know. So what do phytochemicals do? Well, they're antifungal, antibacterial, antiviral. They get rid of cancer-causing agents and they help to control free radicals. What are free radicals? Free radicals are caused by toxins and uh, sugars and all kinds of unprocessed foods and they are what cause disease. So um, the actual antioxidants found in vitamins and minerals will, will um, help to prevent free radical growth. The um, phytonutrients also help repair DNA and um, one of the things that we found, what Dale has done unbelievable research over the years when, since we started Organics for Orphans. And this is one of the books that he found, which, which is Green for Life. Victoria Botenko um, is actually the lady who, who developed or you know, came up with the idea of doing green smoothies. She recognized that she wanted to get her family to eat lots of greens and just found it was very hard to get them to eat salads all the time. So she took a blender and started putting in frozen bananas and berries and, and then lots of green leaves, mixed it up into a green smoothie, and so she's considered the green smoothie expert. Just hang on a second. Put that back. Mm -hmm. the, um, well, no, I'll talk about this. Okay. So what are some of the health benefits of greens? And you'll hear from Dale and I, we talk about greens all the time, the importance of greens. If you don't eat anything else in your life, to eat lots and lots of greens. So there's great health benefits of greens. Helps you stay young and healthy, lowers your cholesterol. It actually helps to build healthy bones. And get, the greens give you energy. And also is amazing uh, food supplement for your eyes. In fact, Moringa contains high levels of lutein, which is very important for, for vision. It also helps fight cancer. And greens help you become alkaline. And I was talking about this earlier, the importance of uh, being alkaline. Foods that make you acidic or animal protein of any kind, dairy, sugar, and processed foods. I know it's bad news, guys, but you have to promise to still like me regardless. <laughs> so uh, 30 years ago, T. Colin Campbell did a study called the China Study. It was the longest study that was ever done in the world. And basically what the study proved is that cancer thrives 
in an environment where there's high protein diet, for example, lots of dairy, lots of animal protein, and it does not thrive in a plant-based protein, plant-based diet. And they proved it, they did it in China, and they proved it over 30 years. So cruciferous vegetables, you guys have heard of these as well. And they are uh, unbelievably wonderful for fighting cancer. And you can see these are a wide variety of the, of the various cruciferous vegetables. And they help fight uh, drug-resistant infections. They also are amazing for detoxifying, specifically heavy metals. And this is another one of the cruciferous vegetables that everybody loves in Africa. They call it skooma wiki. And uh, you can see that it's low in calories, high in fiber, high in iron, high in vitamin K has a lots of powerful antioxidants, anti-inflammatory, and the list goes on and on. So greens are really, really good for you. There's also great benefits for beans and lentils. So Dr. Joel Furman says you should have a cup of beans every day. If you wanna stay healthy, eat lots of beans. So when Dale and I are in Kenya, that's pretty much what our diet is. We don't have any animal protein. <clears throat> we have lots of beans and uh, it's great. Helps to fight cancer, <coughs> excuse me, lowers cholesterol, helps you lose weight and helps manage diabetes. There's also um, amazing health benefits of garlic. So Dr. Joel Furman would say that three of the main superfoods are mushrooms, garlic, and um, what was the other one? Mushrooms, garlic, and I guess it's beans. Yeah. So garlic is really good for you and we eat a ton of it. You can probably smell it like, like a walking garlic thing, but garlic is so healthy for you. You can read the benefits of it there. And um, Oops. Avocados are very good for you, as are many, many different spices. You probably have heard of turmeric. Turmeric is one of the best choices that you could ever use for fighting inflammation, any type of pain within your body, uh, reducing cancer. It's, there, it's just an incredible spice. And cinnamon, for example, is wonderful for balancing blood sugar levels. So I actually put, I love coffee, but if you're gonna drink coffee, always get organic coffee. Do you know that coffee is one of the highest, uh, has one of the highest levels of pesticides of any food you could put in your body? So believe you me, you need to spend the money on getting organic coffee and making it at home. It'll save yourself a lot of money and because it has one of the highest levels of pesticides in it. So cinnamon is great in your coffee because it helps to balance out, say if you put honey in your coffee or sugar, God forbid, um, it will help to balance the blood sugar levels out. So. Now Dale's going to come back up and talk about gardening, which is really...